little hangman guy. Hmm, is this blood splatter? When you came into this world, what name was given to you? Lucy. Goosey. And what pronouns do you use? She, her. Wonderful. Let's see where your path will take you in this dark, unsteady world. Oh, I'm a little bit messy. My outstretched hand feels its way forward to the source of the alarm until it finds the snooze button and the alert comes to a stop. I yawn and roll on my side, curling up into a ball. I'm already snoring when it sounds again, louder this time. I groan at the thought of leaving the comfort of my cozy bed. Alright, alright, I'm awake. Look, there's a little heart right here, <gasps> just like the mouse. Knowing what I would have to skip lunch if I wasted any more time now, I let out a defeated sigh and pull myself up into a sitting position to switch the alarm off. I put my phone back onto the bedside table, but as hard as I try to make it casual, it takes all my energy to swing my legs over the side without falling backward. Uh, I stop moving and allow myself a few seconds to let the day come softly to focus, even if I can hardly keep my eyes open. My whole body feels like it's been hit by a truck. Is that what they call fatigue syndrome? I swear it's been getting harder to fight it off every day. Putting my hands on either side of me, I grunt as I finally push myself off the bed completely. I feel my feet still ache from the previous day's work and I stumble towards my closet, wiping the sleep from my eyes and in an almost robotic fashion, pull on a sleepless blouse and a skirt, whichever is conveniently residing at the top of the pile. The summer shines brightly through the grubby windows of my apartment, filling me with more unnecessary warmth. I close my eyes and bring my arms back behind my head, stretching. Another yawn escapes my throat as I head into the kitchen, only to be faced with an almost empty fridge. Right. I had to get rid of most of my food after the last power outage. Can't eat well if you're late paying the electricity bill. I decide to make myself a chicken salad sandwich and a mental note to do some grocery shopping tomorrow. Or maybe I should not only do it mentally, but also write it down. But also, oh, later. What is that? Oh, is that Slade? Hold on. I know he's from the game Boyfriend Death, but I may have forgotten his name. Drill or Hammer. And then, I think this one is Your Boyfriend, which I haven't played yet, I would like to. It's just really hard to download it. I don't know what this is though. The soft crackling sound under my chair reminds me of the dry leaves that has been scattered all over the floor by a strong draft the other day, and are the sad result of my neglected mint plant. And mind you, accidentally killing it is not an easy task. Oh shoot, how could I forget to water you the whole time? Poor thing. While I throw pitying glances at it, I finish my lunch and pick up some of the leaves, thinking about reviving my plant later, before rushing to get ready for another uneventful day at work. Ooh, everyone is so cute! Especially you. Sorry, I'm really looking at this. Wow, this person can really draw. I step outside into the scorching sun, feeling the same heat wave that has been keeping me sleepy and lethargic for the past few weeks. With squinting eyes, I look at the cloudless afternoon sky. Its bright cocktail blue stretches on forever, giving me a moment of pure serenity. I wonder how I look then. I take a deep breath and enjoy the summer breeze that brings along a dry wind messing up my hair. Such a pretty afternoon. It's a shame I have to work today. I really like her outfit. I am so distracted. Sighing, I put on my sunglasses and wiggle my way through the heavy traffic pouring in from a nearby expressway. Vehicles of all shapes, sizes, and colors bustle by, creating quite a din. Yet, one could still hear the humming sounds of bees darting through the air and the soft clinking of ice drinks from restaurants. I turn the next corner and get only a glimpse of the back of my coworker's car, who's just finished his morning shift before he takes off driving home to his family. 
My feet carried me to the building he had left, a small convenience store where I work as a cashier. Stopping in front of the staff entrance, I looked for my keys, then grabbed the doorknob. Ouch. Only to feel my palm exploding in pain. Dang, not again. I waved my hand as if to shake off that burning sensation. I wish we had more trees throwing some shade in this part of the city or a new affordable entry door for that matter. One that also makes it easier for the air conditioner to run more efficiently. Speaking of, after using a handkerchief to protect myself somewhat from the intense heat of the door, I hurried inside and noticed only a slight difference in temperature. A not so pleasant thought crosses my mind. What if the AC isn't working? I bet Rasmus will use that as an excuse to go home early. Ugh. Rasmus. While I make my way to the break room to fetch myself a drink, I find my coworker already sitting there with his legs stretched out in front of him, his feet propped up on the table and his arms resting behind his head, as if he had come to relax, not to work. As usual, he doesn't bother to look at me or greet me, and continues to ignore me until I have a glass of chill juice in my hands. I like his ears. Man. I could grow a beard just waiting for you. The AC is broken. Rasmus, let me get a good look here. I mean, I only came for the guy with red hair, but he's pretty nice looking too. What are you gonna do about that? Yep, that's Rasmus, the spoiled, obnoxious son of the manager whose favorite pastime is constantly bully me. Unfortunately, I need the money and can't afford to complain about it too much, even though his father is pretty nice to me. Well, except for his cruel jokes about us marrying one day. Huh? Oh look, we're matching. Rasmus and I are anything but a perfect match. Really. Indignant at his reproachful remark, I stand next to the table. Rest my other free hand on my hip and glare at him. I see the corner of his mouth curling up and I realize he's not the least bit intimidated by me. Huh? How should I answer him? Hello to you too, Raz. Wait, were all the colors... were they all different? Yeah, whatever. Answer my questions. What, what do you mean? <laughs> what? Is, is it really that hard to show some basic manners? Ugh, you sound like my oh my oh my step parent at home. If your goal is to make me mad today, you're on the right track. Jeez, calm down. I'm not here to fight you. But to waste my time. I'm here to work. <laughs> I am perplexed by his sudden anger, but it doesn't seem to be directed at me. Even if he's giving me a disapproving glare, he must have had another fight at home and it wouldn't be my first time to be used as a lightning rod. Choosing to ignore his snide comment for the moment, I pull up a chair, sit down and take a sip of my drink. Shouldn't you keep an eye on the store? We don't have any customers right now and none of them will stick around if the AC is not getting fixed, including me. Look, he did use that. Okay. But you're going to help me with that, right? <laughs> what makes you think I would? Because... I thought I could treat you to some salted caramel ice cream if you do. What? I can't help but smile at the realization that my offer seems to have taken the wind out of his sails for now. It's my first time doing something different to get his help, which I always had a tough time with. This person's a really good artist. After all, Rasmus isn't exactly known to be a selfless Samaritan or anything like that. I mean, sure, whatever, let's go. Wait, really? Yeah, are you coming or not? Yeah. The fact that this has worked has caught me so off guard that he used to call me for a second time, threatening to change his mind before I finally rise from my seat to follow him. I feel kind of dumb for not trying this sooner. Things could have been so much easier for me. Dang it. 
But at the same time, it's ridiculous to what lengths I have to go just to get a little help from him. Unfortunately, he's always been like that, bossy, condescending, even bitter about past events that may have been beyond his control. I noticed that he speaks more of his stepmom than his actual mother, but I figured that she might be a topic he doesn't want to discuss, so I never brought it up. Besides, I doubt trying to get to know him better would change anything about our current relationship. After changing into my work clothes and shutting off the power to the cooling system, we removed the thick ice layers and freed the coil from dirt and dust, this time with Rasmus doing most of the work. He was more pleasant to be around whenever we worked, distract him from me, which often led to the illusion that we could get along well. Nobody would believe me whenever I complained about his bullying. People would just laugh and tell me, tell him to go easy on me, making him do the exact opposite. Once we're done, we return to the break room to wipe the sweat off of our faces with the towel and take a moment to re-enjoy the cooler temperature. <sighs> now that that's finally taken care of. Thank you, Ras. Ras. What would I ever do without you? Looking dirt, probably. And just like that, my enthusiasm about him's help is gone. Anyway, he glances at the clock on the wall, then back at me. You better go back to the counter now. I'll check your inventory in the meantime. I just nod as he leaves, pouring myself another glass of juice before I follow him through the door and place it down next to the cash register. There are still no customers, huh? Seems like it's gonna be a slow day. Depending on the season or day of the week, my job can be slow, hectic, stressful, or mind-numbingly boring and repetitive. It's also physically more demanding than some might think. Having to stand in one place all day is hard on my feet, knees, and my back. I enjoy my job, though. Some of the most fun times involve chatting with the regulars. We would laugh, catch up, tease each other. I probably know more about their lives than their neighbors or even relatives. Of course, we also have customers who treat me like I'm something nasty. On the bottom of their shoes, a couple of them could ruin my whole day. Sadly. It's expected of me to debase my self-worth to avoid responding back in a similar manner. Mila, one of the regulars, isn't the type to say anything nice or look even remotely approachable. She usually just buys her cigarettes and leaves the store as fast as she came in. I remember how she got angry at me once for asking for her ID. It was scary as heck and to think, and to this day, I don't know how I even survived her little outburst. But I like to think that she was just having a bad day and isn't the mean kind. Venny, another regular, is pretty quiet on some days and even a bit awkward. He always buys energy drinks and avoids eye contact when talking to me. That's me. I once pointed out how rude I thought this kind of behavior was. Now he occasionally makes an effort to show me that he pays attention. I admit I feel kind of bad about it. Seeing how rarely he manages to smile makes me wonder how miserable his life must be. The other two well-known regulars are Gunther and Levi. Gunther isn't much of a talker, but he's too polite to not engage in some small talk. At first, I was a bit intimidated by his height and bulky stature. The wrinkles and the dark half-moons below his eyes didn't help to make him look any less scary either. Funnily enough, we both bonded later over our shared fear of dentists and love for cats. Levi is the kind of guy that gets you in a good mood as soon as he walks into the store. He's always smiling, greeting, and ready to share the latest rumors with me. Me and Rasmus notice a chemical smell clinging to him that makes it obvious he's dealing with drugs. It's so strange to think that some of our customers might be actual criminals. I don't think I'll ever get used to the fact that I moved to a city with a high crime rate. Gang fights, robberies, assassinations, and other attacks are part of some people's everyday life here. Even our manager has trouble expanding his business without facing any territorial issues. It's crazy, really. Luckily, the neighborhood I live in has been quite peaceful for years. However, I'd be lying if I said I didn't wish for a little excitement every now and then to combat my rather boring life. Still, no customers. 
My weary eyes wander to an open magazine that someone has left on the counter. I pick it up. She's pretty. Wow. I can't help admiring the beautiful young woman on the cover who looks vaguely familiar. I might have seen her around somewhere before, just remember seeing her in a different type of media. She must be a popular model or a dancer. I wonder what it feels like to get noticed by someone like her. Me too. My lips twist in self mockery. Yeah, dream on, Lucy. I finally break away from her charming smile and start flipping through the magazine until I get stuck on a page with a fun looking personality quiz. I guess I could take it to kill some time. Question number one You want to draw a landscape. Which color do you choose? Green. My first thought was brown, but we don't have that, so green. Question number two. You have been blindfolded for a special surprise date. What will you see when your blindfold comes off? We're sitting on a roof terrace to have dinner with a starry night sky. We're surrounded by a lush green meadow having picnic under a tree. We're standing on a pier at the beach and watch the fireworks show. I just imagined this one first, so... Question number three. You've received a gift that you can use to complement your overall style. You open the box and find a thin silver necklace with a rock pearl pendant, a paper straw hat with a black cross grain ribbon, a black leather collar with a metal ring, a bearded beaded, a beaded bracelet with colorful patterns, or a striped knotted headband in your favorite color. I guess a headband. Some basic. Question number four. What's the best snack for a movie night? Popcorn, chocolate, chips, cookies, pretzels, fruit. A movie night. Popcorn. Question number five. You want to get a pet. Which animal would suit you best? An independent pet that I can spend time with from the comfort of my home. A brave, loyal pet that I can be active with outdoors. Or an exotic pet whose behavior I can observe and create new enrichments for them. I have a turtle, but I'm going to pick this one. Hello? Was that a jump scare? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Do you take your hat off? Oh, don't start on me like that. Careful who you're yelling at. If I was the manager, you'd be in big trouble now. But there's no customers. As if you're not causing me enough trouble already. I mumble these words as my lips curl into a pout. My eyes fall on the glass that I accidentally knocked over. It's content drenching the entire magazine, making the answers harder to read now. Groaning, I dug down, grab a paper towel from a tower from a lower shelf and use it to wipe the counter. Then I dab at the juice stains on every page. What's that? A personality quiz. It's what to insult me. <laughs> I feel it. He snorts. Yeah, do you even have a personality you can speak of? I frown and glare at the quiz, instantly regretting having taken it at all. And you're still using a fountain pen, huh? How old fashioned. Goodness, I'm already so tired of listening to his voice right now. Tired of being able to enjoy things in his presence, and tired of him making me shrink each time his mocking gaze grazes me. I let out a small, involuntary gasp when I see this one page. Oh no. I guess my dad's may have been a little too aggressive and it has nothing to do with Rasmus. Nope, not at all. Just throw it away already. You're not here to laze around anyway. There's enough for you to do, even if we don't have any customers right now. Is that why you're bothering me? Or do you actually need something? I was about to tell you that I'm leaving, but the shelves in the second row seem to be awfully dusty today. Better take care of that or no day off for you. I just cleaned them yesterday. But as always, my objection falls on deaf ears. Oh, and I won't take any calls while I'm busy tonight, lounging in a hammock by the pool drinking my cocktail. So you're going to the pool party? Yeah, the losers like you aren't invited. Shocking. 
What makes him think I would want to be invited anyway? Who knows what kind of people he hangs out with and what he's like when he's drunk. Gosh, I hope he gets a nice hangover. Then at least I'd have a break from his constant belittling and criticism, which has become too frequent for my liking lately. He grabs his small backpack and flings it over his shoulder. Ew. Okay. Be grateful that I trust you enough with these keys. Make sure everything is locked and secured. You know the drill. See you tomorrow. And does this that know? And I've been putting up with your crap since day one. You're the one who should be thankful. But I keep that part to myself and dismiss him with a wave of my hand, grumbling. Yeah, have fun at your stupid party. This doorbell chimes as he pushes the door open, taking on the stress and tension I have felt for the last two hours with him. I, I thought I thought this song sounded familiar. My reflection in the window brightens up as soon as I hear the roar of his motorbike, accompanied by a loud summer song that he is now playing from the store's ceiling speaker. As the sound of his engine fades to a distant rumble, I stretch my arms above my head to feel less like taunt violin strings and hum softly to the song. Finally, some well-deserved peace and quiet. It sounds like a Blondie song. Call me? I just hope no one causes any serious trouble now that I'm alone. The headlines about gang raids target- I bet he's in a gang. Targeting small shops are always on my mind when darkness falls across the city. I wonder if cashiers like me will soon have to be armed for emergencies like that. No, stop thinking about this. There's no point in feeding your anxiety now. Just enjoy the music and focus on your tasks, Lucy. Although the AC is running smoothly now, my dry throat craves more cold liquid, so I leave the counter to refill my empty glass in the main room. I take the sticky magazine to throw it with all the other garbage into the containers at the staff entrance. As soon as I'm back inside, the nice music is interrupted by news reports of an unknown sailor serial killer broadcaster. Approximately between July 3rd and August 11th, a serial killer murdered and dismembered in Colma District, is that my district? At least 12 victims, only three of which could be positively identified. 12 brutal killings in almost six weeks and the police has neither clues nor suspects. We ask you to keep your eyes and ears open and reports any crimes, suspicious behavior, safety concerns, and medical emergencies. It is also recommended not to walk alone at night and to leave your workplace early to be home at a safer, reasonable time. Rasmus better come here and help me go home. Gosh, this is awful. I feel myself getting emotional as I imagine the grief the victims' families are going through right now, as if these violent gangs causing havoc wasn't enough. I turn off the radio when I hear another announcer begin to elaborate on the killer's methods. A chill runs down my spine as I look around the deserted shop, suddenly feeling very exposed here by myself. I shake my head, trying to drive away the images of my own death. I wonder if Rasmus has heard about the news as well. Will Rasmus die? Nah, he can't. He's a love interest, I think, maybe. If he did, I don't think he would have left me here all by myself, would he? I don't even know if the coma district is close to where I live. I never had time to fully explore the city after moving and my train of thought breaks by the sudden arrival of customers making me rush to the checkout. I only recognize one of them as a new regular, however he's not what I would call profitable. Quite often he just looks around and leaves without buying anything. Even Rasmus finds it odd and tells me to keep a close eye on him, though whenever he notices my gaze he seems to feel compelled to strike up a conversation with me. Like now. Who are you? Hi. He fiddles with the hem of his shirt and has a hard time maintaining eye contact with me. A bit unusual, but for now I'm glad I can talk to someone that isn't Rasmus. I put on my best smile and greet him cheerfully. Hello, sir. It's nice to see you again. How can I help you on this beautiful day? It, is, it really is a beautiful day, isn't it, Miss Lucy? Oh, how cute. That's new. I know I never introduced myself to him, so I guess he must have overheard my first name somewhere. And really hot, too. I hope you keep yourself hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He's trying really hard to make small talk with me, isn't he? But I'm in no mood to talk about something as boring as the weather, so I try to steer him back on topic. What brings you here today? I, I wanted to ask, um, do you, you know, maybe, maybe we could, um, I mean, I, I would like to, uh, his shoulders sag as he utters a frustrated sigh. That's not how I practice it. Maybe I should, no. Sir, is everything alright? He chuckles. I'm such a coward. He's off. I couldn't understand his mumbling, but before I can even ask him to repeat what he said, he turns on his heels and leaves the store. Hmm. Well, that was weird. I'm baffled for several minutes, but decide that I should focus on other customers instead of blaming myself for a sudden escape as I usually do. I've never seen him so shy and awkward before. He didn't even ask about our products, but I'm sure he will return, most likely tomorrow. After all, everyone could have a bad day. It's dark out. As if on cue, my gaze wanders back to the window as the night falls and I'm embraced by loneliness once more. There's not much time left until my shift is over. What else should I do to shore in the waiting time? Read the newspaper, daydream, take a call. Okay. I want to finish the magazine. Okay, hold on. I need to... I Shouldn't I be on the lookout? It's like nighttime. If I daydream, I'm kind of on the lookout, but like not mentally. I'm gonna read the newspaper. I usually avoid reading the newspaper with its clickbaity headlines, emotional tales, and political gossip, but maybe it has more information about where exactly things merge to click. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. I thought I had. I pick up the newspaper, Rasmus brought, and settle into a chair in the break room. I snap it open, and my attention is instantly drawn to the pictures of the victims I find in its crinkled pages. Then my eyes drift to a small map with the crime scene circled. It seems to have only happened on the other side of town, which puts my mind at ease for now. Still, I shouldn't count on him not continuing his kill. How do you know it's a heap? Okay. Um, in this neighborhood. I slam the cash register shut, lower the shutters down, and activate the alarm system, determined to close the store an hour early today. It should be fine. We were assured that if we skipped an hour or two, we wouldn't get any pay cuts. And I'm sure the manager will forgive me if I make that decision without his permission this time. After making sure I hadn't forgotten anything, I shuffle towards the exit and into the night. Dang. It's already pitch black outside, with only the voices of horns and the engine that sound rhythmically complementing each other. Despite the poorly lit streets, I catch glimpses of other solitary individuals rushing in different directions. In the distance, I spot a group of four with one holding a bat and pointing at a vending machine. The next moment, the bat hits the machine with full force several times. I feel like a jump scare is about to happen. The sound of glass, the crackling, groaning, and even eventually breaking fills the nocturnal silence. I reach for the pepper spray I bought the other day dangling from my bag and hold it firmly in my hand, but on second thought, I definitely don't want to cross paths with these people.